On today's FA Cup third round special, we meet the goalkeeper hoping to put past nightmares behind him when he faces Liverpool. We probe the problems at Newcastle United, six times winners of the FA Cup, and aiming to overcome Derby County this afternoon. We ask, have Nottingham Forest hit the kind of form to bring Brian Clough, the only major trophy, to have eluded him? And in Scotland, we encounter another of the Englishmen making good north of the border. Yes. Good afternoon, Angela. Uh, good day, folks. Nice to have you back. Well, it's great to be back, Saint. A whack of low bar pneumonia, as you know, put me down. Uh -huh. uh, stone and a half lost. So that's good but, for you. Yeah, well, it, it is really, yeah. <laughs> but I understand yeah. the old puppet did a great job. Oh, he was wonderful. I know. Wonderful. The, the only compensatory thing one can honestly say is that I knew I weren't going to lose my job because I come cheaper than the puppets. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh, that is very true, Joe, that is for sure. Right, well, we have uh, matches off today. Uh, there we are in Division 4 at Maidstone and at Hereford. Now, up in Scotland, the matches at Clyde and Morton, and uh, in Scottish Division 2 at Stenners Muir versus Queen of the South. That is off. And in the Tennis Scottish Cup, Ross County, and again, <laughs> Queen of the South, yes. and Spartans against Cowden Beath. Now, the amazing thing there, yeah. that was not a mistake, Jim. Queen of the South, first of all, had the cup tie against Ross County yes. off because of the snow up there. Rearranged with Stannis Muir, and that is also off. Oh, no one obviously wants to play Queen of the <laughs> South. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, no FA Cup ties off as yet. Right, well, our preview of the third round of the FA Cup begins with those first division clubs facing tricky away ties. And we have features coming up with Blackburn Rovers and Newcastle United, who meet Liverpool and Derby County, respectively. We start on Tyneside, where Derby County manager Arthur Cox is only too aware of the Geordies craving for so soccer success. From Newcastle, Mark Tyler. After the traumas of 1990, there's a good deal of bridge building to be done at Newcastle United, not only between the second and first divisions, but also in the boardroom. It's now 16 years since Newcastle's last big Wembley appearance, the 74 Cup final defeat by Liverpool. 35 years without a major domestic trophy has left the club's fanatical supporters desperate for success. Manager Jim Smith knows that only too well, but bringing back the glory days is no easy matter. Very difficult, uh, but I mean, that's why the frustrations are coming out. The frustrations are coming out unbelievable because they've not had any success for 40 years. And uh, they've had brief uh, affairs with, with success when they've had Keegan, when they've got to the League Cup. But they've, they've really never had any genuine success for since they were in the 50s when they were going to the Cup final every other year. And that's why all the frustrations and the disappointments and possibly why you're, why you're up here today, uh, that, that's, uh, that is just the case. The trophy cabinet may look impressive, but these cups were won years ago. New chairman George Forbes is as keen as the club's famous magpie to swoop down on some modern-day silverware. Well, I am personally committed to a maxim that the team comes first. And as long as I am here, that will be my philosophy that everything else comes secondary. Very, very important, but secondary. And um, commercial development will follow on commercial success after the success of the team. So I suppose I've got the fans' point of view in many ways, which may be a bit naive. Time will tell. But as far as I'm concerned, it's what happens on the pitch that will determine our future. Mr Forbes took charge in the wake of Newcastle's recent share issue flop. Efforts to widen ownership of the club and raise money for new players ended in dismal failure. Supporters and local businesses pledged just a fraction of what directors were hoping for. Chairman Gordon McKeague was forced to resign after becoming the target of considerable criticism. Much of it came in the club's widely read fanzine, The Mag. So what went wrong? Obviously it was down to the supporters in the end and local business. But I think they have to give them every incentive to invest in something like that. We're asking them to give money from the heart instead of the head. You can say, why don't you buy electric shares, get your £30 profit straight away. But you're saying, give me £100, you're not going to get it back, but you might have a better Newcastle in the future. But if that's at a time when you haven't got much money in your pocket, plus the club is going through a really bad time, then as you'll see, it's not really the ideal time, is it? Well, it was thought that there were lots and lots of people and lots and lots of money waiting to flood into the club under the guise of a share issue. Unfortunately, that proved not to be the case. Now, there are many reasons put forward for it failing,
but the fact is that we've gone through with it, we found it didn't work, and now it's up to us to make a fresh start and make sure that we found alternative ways of funding, of funding what we're going to do in the future. A new sponsorship deal with a local brewery could help to bring back the star quality to St James's Park. It really was a case of Hawaii the lads with the likes of Gascoigne, Waddle and Beardsley. The big name Geordies who made it after leaving the North East. It's true that we have had three outstanding players here, world class players, in Waddle, Beardsley and Gascoigne. And for various reasons and different reasons I believe in each case they've been, they have gone. Some of them I doubt if we could have kept under any circumstances. But it's certainly, we, I believe, that we've learnt the lessons of the past. And uh, under my chairmanship, every endeavour will be made to keep any future stars. After missing out on a first division place in controversial circumstances last season, Newcastle have surprisingly struggled in the second. A string of injuries haven't helped, and this home defeat by Notts County last Saturday brought the curtain down on a year to forget. Jim Smith is hoping his side can regain home form and bounce back in style with a big cup win over Derby. So is there extra incentive in getting one over former Newcastle boss Arthur Cox? It doesn't bother me. Uh, he's getting one over on Derby County uh, and going into the next act. Uh, Arthur was manager of Newcastle, but I mean, he's been a lot of manager of Newcastle, so uh, um, uh, I think Arthur wants to get one over on Newcastle United also. I mean, uh, that's uh, when you go back to your old clubs or you play some in like that circumstances. You do want to do them a little bit more, and we want to do them a little bit more because we want to get in. We want to set our season going because we've had a terrible season so far. Mm. They've had a terrible season, but I do think, Jim, that if they stick with a bald eagle, uh, oh, I, I think you'll get them out of trouble. The eventually. old bald eagle's not a bad lad. He'd like some of this. I know that. This, <laughs> this, this, oh, the bald eagle would drink this in five minutes. Um, he would. But the sponsors sent this down for you to drink so that when, yeah. when it's empty, we'll get a few quid back on the empties. Yeah. And they said, would the lads like a drink afterwards? Well, they're half gone already, that <laughs> lot. So, so. Well, yeah, I was just saying, you need an half yeah. tick to take the empties back you with it. You do, yeah. Now, listen... The, the, the yeah. Newcastle fans don't know this, but you and I could have been playing with him. We, we could have been. 50s. We could have been. We, we were both offered uh, jobs by Charlie Minton, weren't Correct, we? I was yes. offered a grand in my hand and a car salesman's job. What was you offered? <laughs> well, I never got the car salesman's job. Was Didn't never it? mentioned. But you got the grand in your hand. <laughs> well, I can't disclose that. Oh. Like, Oh, oh. It must have thought well, you were neither of us got it anyway, because we didn't go. <laughs> must have thought you were a bit of an Arthur Daly, the second-hand <laughs> car salesman. Right, now, now to Blackburn Rovers, also winners of the FA Cup on six occasions. Five of those victories, though, were in the last century. Now, they introduced their record signing at Ewood Park today, a goalkeeper who's faced Liverpool in the FA Cup before. Clive Tilsley reports. May the 10th, 1986, a red-letter day in the history of Liverpool Football Club. Their first League and Cup double completed with a 3-1 Wembley victory over Everton, who found Ian Rush unstoppable. Well, almost unstoppable. Now Rush, is it going to be a hat-trick? Oh, so close! Everton goalkeeper Bobby Mims was the youngest player on the field that day. He ended it a loser, but won himself a reputation as one of the country's finest prospects in the prolonged absence of the injured Neville Southall. It was a case of having to grow up quickly. Um, so every game at the time was a big game. And uh, say coming from Rotherham and then I was in the Reses at, uh, at Everton, it was uh, ev everything you were learning all the time. And uh, there, there were just big games which you had to bring the best out of you all the time. Four difficult years on, and the only twin towers on Bobby's horizon are those on the church that overlook Blackburn's training ground. A lot has happened to him since he last joined FA Cup battle with Liverpool. Most of it at Tottenham, the club who in 1988 asked him to step into Ray Clemens' shoes. In reality, he was stepping onto a firing range, a sitting target for forwards and critics alike behind an uncertain Spurs defence. There was no hiding place for me. I mean, uh, nobody around was confident enough to take a little bit of pressure off me. And it was, it was all, I was that busy that uh, every little mistake was highlighted. I think the television cameras made sure of that. You seem to make your worst mistakes in front of us. Well, that's the problem. Uh, it was more difficult because every time I turned the telly on, it would it'd be on the news and what have you. But um, obviously I went into a low spell, but uh, I think I, I got myself through it. Was there a danger that you wouldn't? Was there a danger that you wouldn't pull out that it would actually be the breaking of you? Yeah, possibly. I think to a certain ex extent it's helped me. I'm probably a better goalkeeper now than when I went to Tottenham Hotspur. But, um, Definitely, like, there's three years down the drain, really. 
Last week, Blackburn manager Don Mackay, a former goalkeeper himself, paid a club record sum to free Mims from his Tottenham trap and release him on Liverpool again. He's got things that we can work on, and I know that he's, he, he's had a very hard time down south. Um, perhaps the media haven't helped. I mean, lots of things haven't helped. The supporters perhaps haven't helped. So this is a new lease of life to him. It's a new chance for him to start again. He'll probably suffer a lot more by having a manager to to work under, especially a Scottish goalkeeper. I mean, that will definitely go down with certain people who will remain nameless, but never mind. I mean, it's highlighted all the time when a keeper makes a mistake. An outfield player can make a mistake, get away with it, because there's always some silly idiot of a goalkeeper behind them to stop it. Amazingly, Mackay's squad for the big game can boast a collection of 15 FA Cup final appearances between them. The likes of Frank Stapleton, Kevin Moran and Nicky Reid have wrestled Liverpool for the major trophies before. Now they have a goalkeeper behind them with the same qualifications. Donald into the path of Johnston and Mims did well. Are you a better goalkeeper than last time you faced him in the FA Cup? Yeah. Yeah. Much better. Well, we all hope, Jim, that the lad does oh, well. I'll tell you what, they don't look a bad side, Blackburn Rovers. They've got players. a lot of experience yeah. there. Not going to be easy to beat. No, and, and Liverpool's form uh, this season has been very yeah. ups and downs, as, well, as you has. well know. Yeah, cool, I mean, they? from the game yeah. at Crystal Palace That's on right. the Sunday, the turnaround on New Year's Day and murdered Leeds United. Everybody thought this was going to be a real you know, tough one for them. Yeah. But there you are, Barnsley popping Joe in at an angle scoring. at the back yeah. post to score the first. Well, I must admit, when the scoreline came up, it was somewhat of a surprise because, as you rightly say, I don't think many people expected them to beat Leeds United so easy. Now, the other week we were talking about yes. own goals. Is this a known goal is or this... is it Rosenthal's? Well, I would say that's a great diving header by John Lukic, personally. Yes. But there, there you go. It still counts. But, this but he boy looks as though he's playing well. He is really can... strong, isn't he? Oh, Ronnie. No doubt about that one. That one's down to Rushy. And as you say, you know, it's Liverpool being Liverpool at their best again. Don't know what way to take them. Well, let's have a look at uh, the lineup of those matches. Mm. Where do you see maybe? A turn up in the engine. Well, I had a particularly bad experience at Blackpool once, saying, uh -huh. admittedly, it wasn't for Tottenham, it was West Ham. I'm not guilty, <laughs> I'm not guilty. Uh, so you never know, and with the wind blowing all over the place up there, that could be a very tricky game for Tottenham. Charlton. Charlton to take a bit of beat yes, as well. I think Burnley are going well, and, and yeah. it's a local derby, really, for City going yeah. across there. So that, there'll be a big crowd in that one. So, I, in other words, it's tough for all those well, away teams. <laughs> exactly. There's nothing easy, that's for sure, yeah. in the Cup. Right, time for a break now. When we come back, there's more on the third round of the FA Cup. We've the manager of the month was to announce, and we meet an English striker heading a rich vein of form in Scotland. Stay with us. <laughs> Another FA Cup preview with a brief look at the three remaining non-league sides. And Jim, do you see any of these teams making further progress? Well, I fancy my old club Barnet a little bit uh, at home to Portsmouth. They're mm -hmm. a good side. Of course, we always used to join the Cup in, in this particular round. But when I first played for Barnet, we played our first round of the FA Cup in August. <laughs> yes. so, so by this time, we'd played ten rounds. So they're used to it. Portsmouth fame. I so, think that might be the upset, if uh, there's going to be an upset with those three teams. Yeah. Okay, well, five of the 32 third-round ties are all First Division affairs with Manchester United in the novel situation of beginning their defence of the trophy against Queen's Park Rangers on Monday night. Now, last year's other finalists, Crystal Palace, play Nottingham Forest at Selhurst Park tomorrow. And Forest started 1991 in style, as Clive Tilzer reports. Forest have displayed only fitful signs of the form that will be required to bring Brian Clough some much overdue FA Cup success. They had to come from behind at Norwich on Wednesday, Tim Sherwood scoring after just nine minutes. But once Forest rolled away from the starting grid, they scored goals enough to take them all the way to Wembley. Some of Norwich's defending had a pronounced stammer. Terry Wilson first to capitalise on their hesitancy. And once Franz Carr saw an enemy in retreat, he turned the screw decisively. It was Gary Parker who set up the only goal of the night for another of Norwich's chief tormentors, Nigel Clough. He's banging for It was in the early stages of the second half, though, that Forrest moved into overdrive to race clear, although City defender John Polston helped them on their way. He wasn't the only Norwich casualty on the night. 3-1. Carr left Mark Bowen looking for his tracks to prompt a typically crisp goal. Which how thoughtfully it's teed up by Crosby and Clough. 
and then driven home confidently by the developing Roy Keane. He wasn't finished for the night either. 20 minutes from time, Norwich kept their interest flickering with a Robert Fleck goal that made it 4-2. Dale Gordon had a hand in it. Fleck hopeful. Stranger things had already happened in this game. But Forrest replied with a goal of the night. Keane, the era under-21 international, has proved indispensable since being thrown in for an Anfield debut back in August. He scored four goals over the Christmas period. None better than that one. Gary Crosby made it around half dozen as Norwich caved in. Goalkeeper down, Clough up, Crosby in. Palace may go out if Forrest find the same gear again tomorrow. Pointers to the other all first division ties are difficult to find. Sunderland returned to Highbury where Arsenal beat them with a needlessly conceded penalty two months ago. You may find that fullback John Kay stands off Anders Limpar a little bit more today. His opposite number, Lee Dixon, has the nerve to punish Sunderland again if he doesn't. Sheffield United beat their cup opponents, Luton Town, as recently as Boxing Day. Brian Dean's strength and single-mindedness swung that game. There's no bigger handful in the first division at the moment. Manchester United's defence begins on Monday against Queen's Park Rangers, who they beat back in early September when Mark Hughes was stuck on their substitutes bench. Brian McClare was part of the reason he got the first that day, but Mark Robbins was the man who was filling Old Trafford in the autumn scoring goals with an expertise and a flair which looks certain to guarantee him a red shirt for years to come. And yet Robin's appearance at White Hart Lane on New Year's Day was his first for two months. I'm sure Rangers will be delighted to see him back in contention. A real natural in front of goal. But then the same could be said about their own Roy Wegley, who slotted in the third of his 15 goals that day. He's showing no signs of drying up. United beware. Yes, but the holders are playing well, Jim, very much the form team, and uh, I would think they would win that one on, yes, on Monday night. Yes, I would dis not disagree with that okay. at all. What, what about the other games there? I Where would know, you some see... tough ones, aren't there? I think Villa, Villa's going to be tough, isn't it? Wimbledon are, are always a hard team to beat, and we know that they'll battle till the end. What... Sheffield United, Luton's a hard one to call as well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, now, Nottingham Forest, Jim, we saw the action yeah. there. And their league form really has been very poor for me. And I think yeah. the defence hasn't been playing well. They've been no. losing some silly goals, which is yeah. not like them. I think if they get through against Palace, and they won't yeah. get a tougher game than that, I don't think, getting to Wembley. If they get through that one, I fancy them to win the cup. Yeah, well, actually, it is the game of the round, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing it. And, 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 and you're quite right. I mean, if they beat Palace at Palace, they can go the old way. And maybe the old boy... Old Cluffy yeah. will finally Get. lead them to a, a cup final victory. The it's the only thing he's never won. That's That'd be great. Right, well, there's good news this morning for the boss of last year's losing finalist, Crystal Palace, because Steve Koppel is the Barclays Bank Manager of the Month for December. And oh. surprisingly, it's Steve's very first managerial award. So well done, it's Stevie well done, Koppel. Well done, Steve. And well done, too, to Neil Warnock of Notts County. His side are pushing for promotion mm. after a fine set of results last month. Mm. In the third is Phil Holder of Brentford. He's in his first season of management. Young Phil. And in Division 4, the Barclays bubbly goes to Billy Bremner, manager of uh, leader old Billy. Doncaster Rovers. Congratulations to all the chaps there. Right, now to Scotland, where the battle for the one promotion place to the Premier Division looks like being fiercely contested this year. Half a dozen clubs are currently in strong contention, with Falkirk leading the way. Today, the top two meet, and Falkirk will hope for more goals from their club captain and striker, Simon Stainrod, once of Queen's Park Rangers. Oh, well, Gillard doing well, beating Bass on the little chip there to the far side. Curry's coming in. Success in England is now a pleasant memory, but Stainrod's still achieving up in Scotland. I found the first division in England uh, really hard, you know, to, to the point where players were uh, really, really physical. Uh, and I haven't found that up here. I've found that it's, it's more, uh, more enjoyable. You know, pl players play because they enjoy the game. And uh, I would imagine it would be a different story in the Premier League where it's, you know, much more cutthroat. But uh, it's been an enjoyable uh, season so far. You've played in a lot of good sides uh, around Europe, Simon. How does this Falkirk team compare at this early stage? Uh, very well, actually. Um, we're a football side that, that, that really does pass the ball around. Uh, 
training, we work hard at things which we want to do on a Saturday. Uh, I think there's a great atmosphere about the place for, for everyone. And, uh, and within that atmosphere, you really can, you know, go forward. And, uh, yeah, I, th I think we've got a strong side. The players talk amongst themselves. Who do they see as the main dangers to your promotion bid? Well, it's obvious, I think, Adrian uh, Dundee. Uh, We've played both sides. We've played Airdrie twice, uh, took two points off them there and one here. Uh, got a draw at Dens Park with uh, Dundee. And, and they probably have been our most uh, difficult games. You know, they, they, are, they are the best sides in the, in the league after us. And at this stage, Simon, you're hopeful of uh, getting your first experience of the Premier League next year? Uh, well, I'm striving for that. And uh, luckily, we've got a bunch of lads who are the same ilk. So uh, we'll see, but I hope so. Nice to see Simon doing well and, and nice Falker on useful see, side. but that Steinrod didn't mention the Ackies. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about teams in contention. Hey, the Ackies are in contention. Yeah, Is he the highest paid player in the first division? Yes, he, yes. he gets it all in Scottish fivers. He can't spend it <laughs> south of the border, can he? <laughs> hey, hey, they've yeah. done him. Uh, listen, what about your other team? Never mind the Ackies, your other team, South End United. Oh, yes. Came yes. to Tranmere didn't on uh, New yes. Year's Day. Came to your Tranmere. <laughs> and lost to the quickest goal I know. probably of this year. Actually, Certainly at the moment this year, I think. When it finishes, it'll still be the quickest goal. I was talking to the chairman yesterday of South End, and he, he said how proud he was to be part of that goal. <laughs> um, well, hey, we've put um, the clock on it. Yeah. As to Tony Thomas knocks it in. Unbelievable, isn't it? Eh? Eight seconds yeah. before it hits the back of the net. That's got to be the fastest recorded televised goal ever, isn't it? Yeah. Eh? Well, it is, and uh, funny enough, the, the managing director. Has uh, invited me around for a drink tomorrow. Has he? Yes, yeah, neighbour oh, of mine. Well, you know, so. Yes, I do. He is a neighbour of yours. Yeah, you live in a you live in a posh area now, don't you? <laughs> yes, it's really going well. Three-one victory there. Right, football last night, uh, Stockport County yeah. against yeah. Wrexham. Uh, it's not our usual Friday favourite favourites, no. but nice story here, Jim, because this lad Andy Kilner, yes. he got the two goals for Stockport. First one coming up here. The story about him is he was playing in Sweden and uh, he wrote to uh, Danny Begara, the manager of Stockport, saying, could he have a trial? He took him on, he was brought on in New Year's Day against Gillingham, you know, as a substitute. Played the full game last night and, and gets you two goals. It's a nice little story, well, isn't it? it is a good story and funny enough, I watched Stockport last year in the fourth division and this is his second goal coming up well here. And I thought they were a good side last <clears> year, <throat> and I was quite surprised that they didn't come up, to be perfectly honest. Right. So uh, they are a good team, Stockport. Right. Well, finally today, a uh, contribution from our top tipster, John McCrary. Oh. Uh, he, he's just a man to let us know what's good value at the bookies as far as the FA Cup is concerned. And he's a great Newcastle United fan. So our feature on the Geordies, of course, will draw comment, I'm sure. John. Absolutely heartbreaking, that interminable Newcastle saga. Our suffering never seems to end, and it's always the same. A club divided among itself ends up relegated. And since we last won the Cup 36 years ago, of course, I'm far too young to remember that, the boardroom squabbles, the incompetence, the ego and the sheer greed have helped to drag us down. Now, today against Derby, this is our season. And of all the 32 ties, bookmakers reckon this one is the closest of all to call and the most likely to end up all square. We're 150 to 1 to win the cup. What a dream that would be with the Rams at 50 to 1. But the marginal favourites among the big three bookmakers are Liverpool at 11 to 2, with Arsenal put in at 6 to 1. It's 8 to 1, Manchester United and Spurs, with Chelsea 14 to 1, three London teams there in the top half dozen. And best supported recently have been Manchester City and Notts Forest, both now 20 to 1 from bigger prices earlier in the week. The Division 2 leaders West Ham at double carpet 33 to 1 are rated in front of eight teams in the top division. And if you reckon Blackburn are going to be the shock side tonight, well they're 7 to 1 to beat Liverpool and their cup winning odds 250 to 1 against. And as for the remaining non-leaguers, well invariably they attract loyal parochial support. That's of course why bookies prosper and Barnish are 1,000 to 1 with double that barrow and the complete rag of the 64 sides left in Woking 5,000 to 1. And for the teams reckon the biggest certainties this afternoon, the advice is go west, young man, or young lady, of course. West Ham and West Brom, they're four to one on and nine to two on to go straight through. Their dreams certainly shouldn't go west today. 
But Saint and Greavesy, you're renowned as being wealthy, extremely generous souls. How about handing over £10 million, making me chairman of Newcastle United, and I guarantee the glory days will soon return to St James's Park. And to get that loads of money, Native Tribe in the one o'clock here on Channel 4 in just a few minutes' time, that should help pay for it. In Reddy's, I'd like that 10 million quid. Don't forget, lads. Away the lads! 10 million quid to me? Have you got it to give? <laughs> 10 million in Nelsons to McCrory. Can you imagine? They're all on the first race. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Go. Right, no, you've had the betting, uh, you've had his taps. Yeah. Who do you fancy for their feed cup? Well, I'm going to go for Tottenham, funny enough, because Ooh. in 21. 51, they won the league, 61, 71, 81. Whenever there's a one in the decade, Spurs win the cup. Well, that's as good a reason as any, Joe. As I see, what are you going for? Well, I took Forrest last year. I still think Cluffy will win the cup, and I hope it's this year. OK. Anyway, that's it for our first show of the new year. Don't forget, there's snooker from the Mercantile Credit Classic this afternoon. Results at 4.45. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.